Hi everybody, welcome to this uh, video on the short paper a cost model for reverse nearest neighbor uh, query processing on R trees using self pruning. I hope uh, the title is longer than the talk, but anyway, let's see. So it's a short paper. Uh, it's a first sketch on um, a reverse nearest neighbor query cost model. And um, this is joint work uh, together with uh, Felix, Bota, and uh, Matthias. Um, yeah, so let's jump in and um, see what's coming up here. So uh, just a moment, here is the overview of the talk. Um, so we'll have a, a short introduction about the reverse nearest neighbor queries and how to process them. Um, then I will sketch the um, cost model for those uh, queries um, based on a specific index structure, based on a specific pruning strategy. Um, we have three variants actually, which we'll, we'll um, uh, have in detail later on. And then some first experiments um, that uh, are presented in the paper and also um, other experiments that are not in the paper uh, yet um, because it was a short paper. We had some space limitations, of course. So um, let's uh, begin with an, a short introduction of um, uh, reverse nearest neighbor queries. So um, you probably all know, of course, nearest neighbor queries. So in that case, we have um, a query Q and an integer K. Uh, K. And uh, of course, we compute the K objects in our database that is that are closest to Q. Um, with respect to a given distance function, typically a uh, distance measure, uh, need not to be a function, but uh, a measure. Um, here in the images, we use uh, Euclidean distance um, just for the sake of simplicity, um, but it could be any distance measure here. So our concepts also work with um, any kind of distance measures as long as they are metric um, uh, measures. Yeah? So they need, the, especially the triangle um, in, inequality, but uh, for, for pruning later on, but we'll see that later. Anyway, so here is, um, for example, the query Q, yeah? and then we have uh, here this green object is the nearest neighbor, the one nearest neighbor of uh, Q, because it's the one that is closest um, to Q in the set of uh, points here. Yeah. So we use the following notation here for the nearest neighbor distance of any object P, yeah? K nearest neighbor distance of object P. So in this example here, the K nearest neighbor distance or the first, the one nearest neighbor distance of Q is uh, the length of this uh, uh, green arrow here, yeah? because it's the distance to the first nearest neighbor here. And that probably would be the distance to the second nearest neighbor and so on and so on and so on. Now a reverse nearest neighbor query um, also takes a query object Q and maybe an integer K and now it computes all the objects in the database that have Q as one of their K nearest neighbors. Yeah? So for example, again, for K equals to one, we see now that uh, the nearest neighbor of Q, so there's the same uh, example as above here, the nearest neighbor of Q is not a reverse nearest neighbor of Q because this guy here, this dude here, finds another one as the, uh, the first nearest neighbor and not Q. Yeah? So um, this one here is not a reverse near, nearest neighbor of Q, but those dudes here, the, the, the red one, the red dots are because they find Q as their first nearest neighbor. Yeah? So we're looking for the guys, the, 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 the data points, the data objects that have the query as one of their K nearest neighbors. Um, and as you see here already in this example, uh, the two um, uh, query types, nearest neighbor, reverse nearest neighbor, even maybe on the first glance, it, you, you, you think they are symmetric, they are not symmetric in the general case. Um, so it's really um, two uh, different types of, of queries that have to be processed uh, differently. Yeah? So why should we, um, should we be interested in reverse nearest neighbors? Well, um, there are a lot of concepts that rely on reverse nearest neighbors, for example, um, influence sets, yeah. So reverse nearest neighbors are those objects that are influenced by Q, yeah, by the query. Um, there's also kind of relationship to hotness in graphs and stuff like that, yeah. So especially in similarity graphs. Um, so um, reverse nearest neighbors are um, quite interesting to compute, actually. So by the way, how to compute those reverse nearest neighbors? Well, the naive solution would be um, to compute K nearest neighbor queries for each data object and then just look if uh, the, the query object is on the list, uh, in the result list. Yeah? So um, that is quite naive because we need to compute for all n objects. If we have n objects in our database, we need to compute for all n objects um, a k-nearest neighbor query and then look it up. Well, the lookup is probably um, uh, easy. 
um, constant maybe but um, or depending on k of course but anyway so um, we have n times the cost of, of the similarity query as the total cost um, which is probably without any index um, n squared in that case yeah? um, so that is not a nice um, situation of course uh, as you as you know so um, we look for speed ups we look for for better um, uh, query execution plans and uh, one key idea for the speed up is um, uh, the following so if we know for any object in the database already the k-nearest neighbor distance of this object <clears throat> we simply have to check if the distance to the query object is smaller or equal to the k-nearest neighbor distance of this object if so the object is a, is a reverse k-nearest neighbor of the query if not it's not a reverse k-nearest uh, neighbor yeah um, and um, so uh, the point now is that we come down from O uh, of n squared probably to O of n times uh, the, the cost of the distance computation in a Euclidean distance uh, that is neglectable or even um, constant. So we come down from n squared to, to um, O of n. And uh, we can even accelerate uh, this idea here um, by um, spatial index structures um, so or other index structures actually metric index structures um, so theoretically you know um, spatial index structures metric index structures don't even don't um, yeah um, guarantee um, log n um, query processing in that case but um, um, theoretically you can achieve uh, log n even um, and um, yeah the idea is again visualized here so now these circles here denote the one nearest neighbor distances around the object so this circle here is the one nearest neighbor distance around this object here as you see this is the in the database yeah without knowing the query in advance the same here the same here and here and here and now if you have the query you just uh, look um, in which of these circles is the query object located yeah so you just check for this uh, inequality here um, so in that case for this uh, dude here uh, the distance to the, to the query is obviously smaller than uh, the nearest neighbor distance of this of this uh, object here so it's a hit sorry uh, the same for here and this uh, and uh, here it's 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 different obviously so those are um, not uh, hits they are drops actually yeah, so uh, that is a nice um, idea. And as I said before, um, the advantage is that we can um, accelerate the whole thing by spatial index or metric index structures. The downside, of course, is that we have to compute all these k-nearest neighbor distances beforehand and somehow materialize that. Um, and of course, that has a very high storage overhead and also a very high pre-processing uh, cost. Um, so there is a lot of work in this area um, to somehow ease these effects up. So um, with pre-computation, well, um, there are some, well, um, there are some work uh, that uh, tries to estimate these um, uh, distances um, in order to circumvent the pre-computation. Sometimes you try to uh, pre-compute but don't uh, try to materialize, but approximate uh, those or materialize only approximations of that in order to um, to reduce the, the, the storage costs here. Yeah? So there are many, many um, different uh, related um, approaches that try to um, yeah, uh, ease these downsides here um, a little bit um, up. Yeah? Um, so um, how to process the uh, reverse nearest neighbor query now on this idea of um, this um, uh, pre-computed um, K and N distances. Uh, we use here a spatial index structure, but it can be any metric index structure actually. Yeah? So here we use the R tree, uh, which uh, is then the so-called RDN entry. Um, it's existing since the 1990s. Um, and the idea is quite simple. We just store the data objects in any R tree as usual. Yeah? So here you have an R tree for those dots here. Yeah? You probably know how that works. We have minimum bounding rectangles for the page regions of the nodes and um, a hierarchical structure um, um, for, for, an, for an index tree. Yeah? And then uh, you pre-compute uh, and store the k and n distances of each object. Yeah? You typically use a, a fixed k in that case yeah, for, for each data object. And, um, but um, yeah, so you store that with uh, the particular object and then aggregate for each index node the maximum k and n distance 
um, of all the nodes. Yeah? So each of the nodes now, here you have the nodes, um, which are represented by these minimum bounded rectangles, and each node now, because it stores um, some uh, objects in the, in the subtree, um, each node now um, gets a k-nearest neighbor distance, an aggregated k-nearest neighbor distance, which is the maximum of all the objects, the k-nearest neighbor distances of the objects in the subtree. Yeah? So you see here, this is this uh, this node here now gets um, the aggregated k-nearest neighbor distance, which is this um, rounded um, um, uh, yeah, rectangle around uh, this minimum boundary rectangle of the page region. <clears throat> And now the nice thing is since you just want to know if the query object is closer to an object or on a higher level in the index to a node than the k-nearest neighbor distance of the object or of the node, um, the, the k-nearest neighbor query is now a simple kind of point query. Um, you need to define those subtrees um, where the, 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 the query is within the, the range of this aggregated k-nearest neighbor distance. Yeah? So you take this uh, minim, min dist um, uh, approximation, the distance, the minimum distance between the query object and the page region, which is in that case a minimum bounding rectangle. Um, and uh, if this min dist is smaller or equal than the k-nearest neighbor distance of the particular node, you have to refine the node. So you have to go down in this subtree and because there are potentially some, um, some, uh, some hits. Yeah? And you see here in that case, I hope you see that, um, you would refine this guy here. Oops. Um, no, you would refine this guy here and this guy here because uh, Q is within this, this, these K nearest neighbor distance ranges of these two um, uh, nodes here, yeah, which are given by the, by the rectangles. So that is the basic idea. And um, now we want to, uh, so that is all existing so we want to come up with a cost model what is a cost model why a cost model well during query optimization of course we may have different execution plans different algorithms plans based on different algorithms so uh, we need to decide which one to pick um, so estimating the, the the cost of each of the plans each of the algorithms of course is mandatory to to pick that um, or to make that pick um, so uh, the cost of the different algorithms are typically dominated by the number of page accesses still, even though we have SSDs and not only HDDs, uh, H, um, um, yeah, uh, hard disk drives. But anyway, um, um, the, we, we typically want to um, predict or estimate the number of page access, accesses necessary to answer given query by a given algorithm. In, uh, and most of the algorithms are based on, on data structures, such as index uh, structures. Um, um, so we, we want to um, uh, estimate the number of page accesses uh, of these indices in, in, in index uh, structures. Yeah? So in our case, we would like to predict the number of subtrees in the index that need to be trans uh, traversed in order to answer the given queries. So here, for example, well, we have the root, which is probably this one here. Well, the root is always in the cache and always accessed, of course. But then on the next level, we probably have this uh, page here. Those pages here, uh, the bigger pages here are not uh, traversed, so we only need to traverse this one here. And then on the lower level, we have this and this, so we probably would have something like four um, uh, nodes that we have to explore. Um, so we would have um, uh, four page accesses minus one because the, 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 the root is typically um, in, uh, in main memory, but anyway. Yeah? Okay, so that is the plan, that is the, the goal, that is the idea here. And the question is how to, to get that. Um, so once again, this is a short paper. So this is a first sketch of a, a cost model for um, uh, reverse nearest neighbor queries um, based on this idea of these um, um, K and N spheres. So the RDN entry or the MRNN co-op tree or any approximation uh, tree or, or um, um, query processing um, plan would uh, probably be um, uh, yeah, could probably be um, um, uh, applied here. Yeah. So um, what is the general idea for the cost model? Well, again, we have this um, um, specific um, rule here, the decision rule, so to say, if we have to refine a subtree of a node or not, so which is, sorry, which is this one here. Yeah, so we have to look at the min dist between the minimum distance between the node, the page region of the node, which is in our case a minimum bounding rectangle, 
uh, and the query. And if this is smaller or equal than the um, nearest neighbor distance of this node, the aggregated in our case, um, then um, uh, we have to refine the node n. Yeah? So now just a um, um, uh, denomination. So let us call the k and n distance of a given node now epsilon. Yeah? So uh, the page region of n, uh, which is denoted by n rec here in the formulas, uh, can now be or is extended by this epsilon as it is shown here yeah um, and uh, we can have or we can compute the volume of this extended page region so this is the page region the original page region the minimum bounding rectangle of this node here and now this is just the um, the k and n distance which we now call epsilon here um, so this is the extended page region and if the query is within this volume here within this region, extended uh, page region, we have to refine this, uh, this subtree, right? So, um, and we can compute the volume here uh, of this extended page region by the so-called Minkowski sum. Uh, so it's down here and it's also written in the paper. It's not no secret um, how to compute that actually. Yeah, so um, actually this extended page region used uh, is this one here is used for um, estimating the costs of range queries, uh, also no, uh, known as epsilon range queries. So that's why we call it epsilon here. Um, and the probability, so from this, from these, uh, from these uh, cost models, um, which is basically uh, proposed uh, back in, in, in 1993 uh, by some independent uh, work here. Um, probably uh, well basically the same the same cost model um, we can pro um, um, yeah um, compute the probability uh, that we have to refine um, a given subtree just by um, yeah uh, computing the proportion of the uh, volume of this extended um, <coughs> page region um, uh, divided by the the entire volume of the entire data space yeah which is I think quite intuitive yeah and uh, this is the basic idea so <clears throat> the probability is just uh, the probability that we um, randomly place a point in this uh, region here so we take this region here divided by the region of the entire data space that is probability that we actually place it in this page region here yeah um, and yeah with a little math we get the cost model here um, you can uh, have a look at uh, the papers here so the page access is actually given by this uh, number here which is the cardinality so well we we sum up all the nodes um, of the index actually and we take the cardinality of the of the nodes times the Minkowski value uh, Minkowski volume the Minkowski sum of um, basically this the sphere um, um, which is the yeah basically the the the, the spatial spatially extended uh, extended region yeah so that is the formula of the of the, the cost model from um, uh, from uh, epsilon range queries yeah and that is actually what we need um, so it looks like we are all done um, well no uh, unfortunately not because for range queries the epsilon is fixed for all nodes because it's a query parameter actually yeah now for uh, RK and n queries the epsilon is um, um, yeah varies um, from node to node yeah so each node has its own epsilon because each node has its own aggregated K and n distance yeah? okay well we still can even uh, can compute the Minkowski sum of course uh, based on this K and n distance just you know, um, replacing epsilon by k and n distance, no, no, no problem. Um, but um, the problem is how to deal actually with with these individual k and, k and n distances. Yeah. So uh, going back here, we we just have always the same epsilon for the for the epsilon range queries. So we just have we don't have to take care about um, the the individual nodes. We just have to know. We just need to know how many nodes are there actually. Yeah. Now uh, we not only need to know how many nodes are there, but also need to know what are the individual um, um, the individual k and n distances? Yeah, and um, obviously um, there is a trade-off between accuracy of the estimation. If we take all the nodes, all the k and n distances of all nodes into account, um, we need to store them. We need to look them up, um, or uh, we rely on some heuristics. Yeah, and um, that is what we actually propose here as three variants: ex excuse, uh, exhaustive exclusive exhaustive is we sum up all the individual sums for all nodes the second variant is simple we just take one which is in that case the road the root which is probably the most conservative because we um, 
take all the maximums, aggregate the maximums, so the maximum of the maximums are um, uh, is, in, is in the root. And um, the third heuristic is somehow a compromise between the first and the second one, so we aggregate over all nodes of a given level of the tree. Yeah? So let's have a, a short or a closer look um, um, to, um, to those variants. So the first variant here is uh, sum up all the individual sums for all nodes. So we look at the root node, take the, 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 the k and n distance, the aggregated then here in the first level and second level. So we take all of those. Yeah? That is the particular formula we get here. Um, obviously, that is the most accurate estimation we can get with this approach yeah? because we simply take all the information that we have from the index, yeah? but of course it requires um, uh, access to all the k and n distances of all the index nodes. Yeah? Could of course be materialized or approximated or estimated, yeah? um, at least for small indices, um, but um, for larger indices, of course we, we materialize that because we need that during query processing, but if the index is large, we um, probably require to access the, the individual nodes here, which means that we have to access um, all the pages, the, the entire, the entire um, um, index actually, yeah? which is of course not a good idea um, uh, performance-wise. Um, the um, other extreme is the, the most simple one. Yeah, we just consider the root of the uh, index tree. So we, we, we don't consider all the information that we have here, but we just take the information, the k and n distance from the root. Um, decreases obviously the accuracy of the estimation, um, or at least theoretically, you will see um, in some experience that not, not necessarily. Um, estimation is still somehow conservative, yeah, uh, we'll aggregate the maximum uh, can in, in distances in the root, of, of course. Um, and um, yeah, the evaluation is extremely efficient, of course, because um, yeah, the information can be easily held in the cache, just one float uh, value. Yeah, and then the compromise is that uh, we aggregate the k and n distance values of all nodes from one level of the tree. So we aggregate, well, the root we don't have to aggregate, but now we aggregate the uh, nearest neighbor distances of this level here, of all the nodes from this level here. So in, in this uh, toy example, we have two nodes on this first level here. So we take, um, <clears throat> for example, the average or the minimum or the maximum, whatever. Yeah. So in, in our case, we take the average, but we could use any other um, here, of course. And then the cost model is uh, given here by this formula here. And um, yeah, obviously we trade off um, the overhead for the materialization and, and of course also getting the, the information versus uh, the estimation accuracy. So now let's see uh, what some first experiments um, um, tell us about um, the, the whole thing. So the setting is always the same. We used the RDN entry from L key with page size of 8K and used um, primarily um, synthetic data sets, three-dimensional, um, where we um, used two variants. The first variant is uh, a clustered data set with 10 Gaussian clusters of equal size, random mean, random standard deviation, plus 10% noise. And we used 50% uh, of this data set um, for the database and 50% uh, of the remaining points um, f uh, as query points. Yeah? And um, yeah, we um, averaged the, the estimation errors, absolute left, uh, relative uh, right, with um, um, different database uh, sizes first. So K is uh, set to one, and we just wanted to see how uh, the, the cost model, or the, the error actually evolves uh, with uh, increasing database size. And you see that in, in that case, um, so here the green one is uh, the root thing, uh, the yellow one is, um, um, an average uh, thing. Um, the the uh, blue one here is um, the exhaustive thing and the red one here is the, the aggregated thing, the, the, the third variant here. And you see that, um, yeah, well, um, the root, uh, the exhaustive one, of course, is the, um, the worst. Um, overestimates, actually. Uh, all the others underestimate um, the, the, the costs, actually. Yeah? And um, maybe we look at the relative error. You see that the, the error rates are in the range of 60 to 80 percent, um, and here it's um, more in the in the range of 20 to to, to 60 percent actually. Yeah, but it grows with um, growing size of, of the database. 
Now, um, we um, also varied uh, the K, so there's the same uh, setting as before, but now the database size is fixed to 200,000, um, um, 200, and we use um, a, diff a different case here, and you see that with different, uh, with increasing K also, the costs increase. Now, in that case, um, uh, again, uh, the root, um, uh, the, exhaust, uh, the, the simple one is um, the worst. Yeah as, as um, um, expected. Now we also um, uh, use uh, some experience with um, um, equally uh, distributed noise. Yeah? So we don't use clusters here in that, in that data set. So this is another data set where uh, the data is equally distributed, uh, the same setting as before. Yeah? So here we see that uh, the, uh, with increasing size again, it's quite stable. But still, and and much better actually. Yeah. So the relative error is much better in in in, in most of the cases. And, and interestingly, um, the simple one is the best here. Yeah. So um, if you have just random data, so it seems to be um, the best ex um, estimation that you get if you just aggregate the maximum k and n distance, which probably makes sense because all of those um, k and n distances are more or less the same. Um, at least that was, well, that's what you expect. Yeah? So it's, it's not, su not a big surprise that there's uh, no big difference between um, these, um, these values here. Yeah? And the same, um, uh, we did the same with different Ks and now the, the, the um, um, picture is a little bit different. Um, so uh, the more sophisticated, the potentially more sophisticated um, uh, things uh, are worse now and uh, interestingly the the simplest uh, thing is is the best here in that case yeah uh, once again no that is not gaussian but that is um, equally distributed noise sorry yeah okay um yeah to come to an end i think yeah well it's even longer than the title of the of the of the paper so anyway uh we tried to sketch a first idea for for a cost model of reverse for reverse kdn snapper queries um the one is based on the well-known um, cost model for range queries but we have to adopt that um yeah we um, have proposed different variants that trade off um, estimation currency versus um costs for storage, materialization of information, and of course for computing, fetching information from disk or whatever. Uh, we are limited to self-pruning approaches um, using hierarchical metric index structures, uh, but we are not limited to any specific type of tree. It could be an M tree, it could be any tree, yeah? any uh, type of page region, um, uh, any kind of distance estimator, um, and so on and so on. Yeah? And for future work, we try to um, explore all those different possibilities of different page regions, different distance approximations, distant dis different distance estimations also. So there are a lot, as I told you before, there are a lot of workarounds to, to, um, to overcome this problem of these pre-computed K and N distances and these materialized K and N distances. And we want to explore a little bit more on that if we can um, um, yeah, refine the cost model um, in order to to get rid of these, also, I mean, we also have these problems of uh, or the trade-off between accuracy and um, and materialization in pre-processing. So um, we we try to we try to um, to explore more uh, about that. Of course, come up with more experiments. Uh, we also did some first experiments about um, data dimensionality. Um, as expected, it um, it gets worse um, since the index probably uh, the the R tree the underlying R tree gets worse with uh, high dimensions. But anyway, uh, and finally, we want to integrate all those different um, cost models for the I mean this the same cost model but for different variants um, into one common query optimization uh, system in order to perform more systematic comparisons um, between uh, the cost models or predict different. Uh, costs for the different um, algorithms um, so that we have a more systematic uh, comparison between all those different cost models for the different approaches. So I hope I'm uh, in time. I hope you're not falling asleep, but um, uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you and it will be a pleasure to see you um, virtually on uh, CSAP, uh, hopefully next year uh, in person. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them in uh, the virtual session then. Um, or um, uh, when we discuss the poster. Okay, thanks a lot and see you there. Take care.